Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments. Alamance County is pleased to present the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. This is February 17th, 2020, 7 p.m. meeting of the Alamance County Board of Commissioners. I'm board chair, Amy Scott Gailey, and starting to my right, we have vice chair, Steve Carter, Commissioner Bill Lashley, and Commissioner Eddie Boswell tonight. Um, Commissioner Sutton um, was not able to make it tonight, so uh, if you care to, would you please join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, we just lift up our hearts to you tonight with praise and thanksgiving for the day that you have given us, that you allowed us to see this day, and we pray that, that uh, you will allow us to see tomorrow Lord death has come into our community and there are many people who are suffering and struggling with grief for the loss of loved ones where we pray that you would they would feel your hand of blessing and peace and comfort would surround them um, I pray for all of those in our community who work in helping professions those who have dedicated their lives to improving the lives of others and helping other people. I especially pray for the safety of our first responders and our law enforcement and for those who are serving our country in the military, Lord, that they would um, be protected and that you would keep them safe as they put their personal safety at risk for the community. Lord, I pray for this board that you would help us and guide us in our decisions that we would um, be wise and that we would honor you with all that we do and say and thank Lord. I pray that you would make us worthy of the calling that you have put before us and that we would be pleasing in your sight. In our Lord's name we pray, amen. 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 Would you please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The first item on our agenda is a time for public speakers who wish to be heard on matters which are related to agenda items. Um, I do not have the speaker book. We don't have anybody signed up for any public speaker. All right. So... That's all right. So, therefore, um, I presume we don't have any commissioner responses. So, the next item on our agenda is to approve the agenda. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the agenda. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Next is uh, approval of the items on the consent agenda. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. If there's no discussion, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Thank you. All right, now we have a presentation from Jeremy Akins, our tax administrator, about advertising for our tax liens. Jeremy, how are you doing? Doing well, and you? Good. Doing all right. well. You have the department really looking sharp down there for Black Bear. Well, I thank you. Thank you. Well, actually, uh, Cindy down in collections, that's one of her passions, is every season to put up new decorations. And uh, we think it presents a, a good appearance to our citizens as they come in, but also it kind of helps to keep morale up, keep people happy. Yeah, so, right. Absolutely. Um, well, thanks for having me here tonight. Uh, it's time for the annual advertisement on tax liens. Uh, so the North Carolina General Statute 105-369A <coughs> requires the tax collector to report to the board um, any unpaid taxes on real property that forms liens on that real property. And the board then charges the administrator to go forward and advertise uh, each lien at least once in a newspaper having general circulation within the county. Now the cost of the advertisement is borne by the person advertised. So the, the person that's paid timely does not pick up the tab to advertise someone else. When you <coughs> advertise a, an account, a $5 fee is added to that account to cover the cost. Um, <coughs> as of January 31st, the total amount of liens against real property for current year taxes 
was four million six hundred forty four thousand nine hundred one dollars and sixteen cents and I thought it was interesting to look at uh, where it stands today so as a close of business today it's down to three million eight hundred forty two thousand six hundred seventy dollars and fifty two cents and as you can see payments are continually steadily coming in Another thing I wanted to look at was uh, how many parcels were involved, <coughs> and at the time that delinquency began, we had about 5,900 parcels that would be uh, scheduled for advertisement. If we look at how it closed out last year, it was about 4,200. So we've got a, a quarter, maybe 30 percent that's expected to pay as we go along. Now, if somebody pays in the month of February, uh, we guarantee that we will not advertise them. As we get into March, uh, there becomes a point where we're going to have to stop, run the file, and send it off. So we encourage everyone possible to pay by the end of February. Make sure, because we'd hate for someone to come in at the last minute and say, we just sent it to the newspaper. Uh, so we hope folks will come in timely for that. Um, I would recommend advertising on or about March 19th, and that would allow us plenty of time to make sure if there's any stragglers out there in the mail, if they're postmarked by the end of February, that we can honor that. Um, what I'm here to ask is that the board approve, uh, or for a motion of the board, to approve the lien advertisement at a cost of $5 per parcel. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve that uh, request. Is there any discussion? <coughs> if not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks so much. <coughs> okay, next we have Mr. John Kane, the County Fire Marshal, with a request for approval for a fire insurance adjustment. Good evening, Madam Chair and Commissioners. <coughs> I'd like to reiterate what Amy spoke about a while ago about the family of our one of our own employees that lost a loved one. It's pretty horrific, not only for firemen on scene, but also paramedics and sheriff's deputies out there also. So remember those as they move forward. I come to y'all tonight with another adjustment to the fire district lines or insurance district lines. Um, Eli Whitney built a substation in the early 1980s down on 87 South. The district lines, the insurance lines were never adjusted. So I was contacted uh, back in the middle of the summer from a gentleman. His insurance uh, went up 54% after his insurance company found out that he actually lived in another district. He thought he lived in Eli Whitney. He actually lived in Snow Camps District. And they were outside the five mile district. I have on the board up here, um, coming down from the top, uh, the, it's kind of hard to see, but it was in y'all's packet. Coming down from the top, Eli Whitney can cover both sides of this road, Thompson Mill Road up there, and also coming off the bottom. Um, the district is in the uh, Snow Camps District, but Eli, Eli Whitney has agreed to take it over and adjust the insurance district maps where those people could, could see some benefits on their savings of the insurance if approved by the board. If it's approved by the board, it goes to the state. I've talked to Vernon Ward again at the state. He said it should be no problem. Probably 60 or 90 days, they can see some benefits from the insurance savings. Has Snow Camp had any issue with this? Snow Camp, um, we done one last month with Jordan Meadows, and that was both fire departments agreed to it. Snow Camp said they could not give up the tax money for doing this. So to do it uh, legally by the state, it had to be processed by the insurance district adjustment. Snow Camp will still receive the tax money. Eli Whitney has graciously agreed to cover this to, to let the benefits go for the homeowners. Do it without the right, they're going to do it with that. That's correct. Well, good. That's good. Okay. The motion to approve. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second to approve that request for the fire insurance adjustment. Is there any more discussion or questions? If not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. And thank you to Eli Whitney. Okay, on to the budget amendments. Do we have a couple for recreation and parks? Good morning, Commissioner. Good evening. I don't even know what time it is. It's dark out. Hello. Brian, it's let's, dark. Let's go with the <laughs> Uh, I've, I've got two budget amendments, so it's throwing me off my game here. Uh, <laughs> the first one is the performance management funds, uh, just moving those from our performance management savings account um, into an account where we can spend. Uh, so this is money that uh, the department saved over the years with the performance management program. We are trying to, at long last, finish our equestrian center at Cedar Rock Park 
this is the last bit of money that we need to do that, and which is good. It's the last bit of money we have, so that works out. <coughs> um, but this would transfer uh, that so we can spend it, and we'll be able to construct a facility there for public horse rides. How many horses do we have? We currently have zero horses because we don't have a place to put them. But as soon as this barn is done, uh, our, our hope is to find a third-party vendor to come in and offer. Come in and offer. Okay. That's, that's, that would be better. It's our strong preference. Save the county some money. Yeah, I, I don't want to own horses. I've been ready to ask you about that. You don't want to <laughs> we've got, we've got mules and sheep and cows and goats, and that's probably... We've got a couple of mules out there that can ride. Yeah, <laughs> they're not as friendly as you'd like with the young ones. Not ride. Yeah. You get a lot of uh, people out there with horses, too, don't you? Tons of horse riders. And uh, we built this other entrance at the equestrian center, and that's working great. Um, everybody's happy there. Uh, for the use of this facility. It's just, you know, we really want to expand our trail system to people who don't have horses. And owning horses is not <coughs> fun for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, so it's expensive. So yeah, it's, it's a serious hobby. It's so expensive. we want people who live in town to be able to come out, bring their kids, ride for an hour or two, and, and go home and yeah. have that experience. So they'll operate that on like a loan or rent it out for so much time or what? Yeah, we haven't gotten into those negotiations, but yeah, I think it'll be, um, we're not probably not going to make a lot of money on that deal. Right. We'll have a vendor there that will serve the public. That's a good experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A good experience. I'll move that we approve that. Second. Okay, hey, we have a motion and a second to approve that budget amendment. If there's no more discussion, all in favor, please say aye. Uh, aye. aye. Anyone opposed? Okay, and you have one more? Yeah, the second is a a, a grant, we're calling it a grant from, from FEMA. It's not a grant that I'm traditionally up here for. It's really reimbursement for the damage that we received at Hurricane Florence. So the, the repairs that we have made ourselves that we were able to do in-house, we've already done those. We've already been reimbursed for those. This is for the things that we haven't done yet, either because we haven't been able to have time for them, but mostly because they're not things we can do. Um, so these are funds to allow us to go and get a contractor to complete this work. So it's it's a reimbursement for damages um, that they will pay us once we have um, located a contractor and uh, gotten that work bid out. I know there's been a lot of uh, high water in the last few weeks. Yeah. Have you had further damage to the property? Not any real damage. It was the water was really high. It was it was just as high as the hurricane. I was out there walking Sunday. And it was really nice. A little muddy, but it was nice. Yeah, well, yeah, it came two days before it was really yeah. nice. It was still <laughs> kind of like gross an on the ground. Um, <laughs> no, we had our traditional damage, which is, you know, it's, it's not permanent. It's mud covering everything that the water yeah. got over. But, you know, it's okay. We're used to that at this point. We just get out there and scrape it off and, uh, and keep rolling. But nothing, nothing that needs real fixing. I'll make a motion that we approve to accept this mitigation grant in the amount of 69746 from FEMA. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the budget amendment. If there's no further discussion, all in favor, please say aye. Uh -huh. Aye. Anyone opposed? Great. And we don't have any public speakers on non-agenda items, and so there's no responses. So, uh, Mr. Haygood, do you have a county manager's report? I've got it. I've got it. Do we get this paper? Um, good comments. Okay, okay. The general okay. comments. Sorry, I'm Brian. Better. Better. Okay. Uh, I do have two items for the board to uh, consider and think about. Uh, the first, I want to speak about the detention officer separation allowance. If you remember, uh, it's been some time back. Uh, the commissioners uh, worked with our legal department and our HR department and the detention staff and the sheriff put together a, a proposed local bill that went to Raleigh for the state legislature to consider uh, giving us authority to be able to offer detention officers a separation allowance very similar to the same uh, separation allowance that sworn uh, officers uh, are able to benefit from. Well, that effort has stalled. We haven't uh, been able to get a lot of traction in Raleigh. I think it was uh, sent to a committee and has been in committee ever since. So uh, our our office and the HR department and the county attorney's office have been working together to try to find another way to, to offer this uh, option for detention officers, and I believe that we have found a way to do that. Uh, we would, uh, we're looking at calling the new uh, offering for detention officers, the Alamance County Detention Officer Social Security Bridge Allowance. 
it would be very similar to the original plan that we put together and sent to Raleigh. Um, and, uh, we've been working to finalize the details of this plan for detention officers, and we've also given the details that we've come up with thus far to a personnel attorney, someone that specializes in uh, one tax purposes to make sure that uh, we're not doing anything to put our detention officers in some strange tax situation and also to make sure the terms of it are uh, acceptable from a personnel law standpoint. I believe that it will all be found to be uh, acceptable and I hope to be able to bring you this new uh, benefit for detention officers in March for your review and for approval. So uh, we'll, we'll be shooting, depends on when we hear back from our attorney, either uh, first meeting in March or no later than the second. So um, I think we're excited to be able to have it this close. It's been a lot of work put into this by uh, Clyde and by Sherry and by Sheriff and his staff. So uh, I just wanted the board to know we're very close on this and be looking for me to bring this to you uh, in March. And the second item that I have for you is uh, I wanted to give you a copy of the uh, budget calendar for uh, fiscal year 2021 budget. So and I'll also email this to you too, but I wanted to go ahead and pass this out this evening. So this is our calendar for the budget process welcome for next fiscal year and uh just copies to the to the press also mm -hmm. welcome. and the main the main points to note you want to copy of the t-shirt there you go <laughs> the main the main points to note is uh the budget retreat it's planned for april 6th that'll you know, we're going to try to stick to the already existing <coughs> meeting schedule for the commissioners so we're looking at april 6th to have our retreat which is a morning meeting and, and our format has been in the past uh, we have presentations by myself uh, and some of the very large departments the sheriff's office help dss all department heads are present you'll you'll receive their information you'll be able to ask some questions if you want to on the 6th and then on april 20th uh, we'll plan to have ABSS and ACC come that evening and they'll present to you uh, their own budget requests. So it'll give you an opportunity to talk to them and ask them questions about their proposed budgets. And then uh, we're looking at having the manager's recommended budget to the commissioners on May the 4th. That's a daytime meeting. Then having the public hearing uh, on the proposed budget scheduled for May 18th. And then we're looking to have the budget adoption on June the 15th. So I wanted to go ahead and get this in your hands this evening. You could be looking at it, thinking about our upcoming agenda calendars. I'll be sure and share this with ABSS and ACC also. But I wanted to get that to y'all this evening. So. Thank, you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And that's all that I have. Thank you. Very good. Um, Mr. Lashley, did you have any commissioner comments? I uh, certainly do. I, I've had a bunch of phone calls and, and comments from people who own bars go out to county and their biggest complainer that they that they're they're concerned about is uh, they can't supply their customers with liquor by the drink. You know they and they tell me if they're the people that uh, come by their their bars if they want a liquor by the drink, if they want a mixed drink, they gotta come all the way to town. And they're concerned about driving, getting caught driving while impaired. So I would like to put liquor by the drink on our agenda for March, one of the one of the meets in March, so we can talk about it. Is that something that would have to be voted on by the public? Yes, or? absolutely. We have to. The board would have to determine if they want to go that route. And then call for an election, like a referendum, under Chapter 163. So we don't to... we don't quite meet the requirement under the statute for the county to do this by resolution. We missed it by. What it is, you take the three largest cities in the county where mixed beverages are already sold, and you take that population, and it's got to be more than two thirds of the total county population. It just misses it by number I think is 99,000 I think it's 91,000 so we in order to do it we have to uh, have here, we, yes, so we got to put it on the ballot you have to vote on that and you also okay. have to vote uh, on that same referendum that you establish a county ABC store that's that a great idea well you've got to have a way to ship the alcohol to the 
people that live in the county. Yeah. Unless you can work up a deal with Burlington or Graham or. I'm sure they'd be more than happy to. Well, they have to share their profits with you. Mm. So. Yeah. Uh, so those are all the things we can discuss. Okay. So Revenue for the county. You know. Yeah. So we need a motion. Um, no. I don't think so. Just mm. Mr. Albright, could you prepare a presentation sure. for uh, maybe the next meeting? where we can have uh, maybe language so we would have to vote to approve the language for the ballot the, is that the right? form of the ballot is set forth in the statute the language is specific language that has to be on there and so similar to the sales tax that right. we're voting on right now that's correct so the board would vote to approve it being a, a referendum to be on the november ballot yes and at and the same time, we don't really uh, have anything else to do. Yeah, at the same time, you have to approve the establishment of the county ABC store. At the same time. Right. So we have to determine where that would be located. At no, not time? that time. Just as or did you say we could work it out with, with the uh, you can city? city. If, if it all passes, you can okay. work out a deal with Burlington or whoever's got the. Yeah. I think it's Burlington's got it. That would be the way to go. We'd save money. All alcohol is distributed from ABC yeah. in, in this state. So well, it's very complex. Who yeah. operates the ABC stores on the county now? There's a, are they just in the cities? Is that, yeah, city. Yeah. 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 that revenue goes to the cities and this would be a, in the county yeah. ABC right. store? Right. So it would have to be outside mm -hmm. of the city limits of Mebane, Graham, and Burlington? Yeah, that's correct. Everything outside the cities. And, and Elon outside. Elon also. Can we do more than one ABC store? <laughs> or does it have to be only one? <laughs> you can put one in the north and one in the south. That's what I'm wondering. <laughs> well, I thought we had an ABC store in uh, Northern Alabama. Do we not have one up there? I'm afraid yes, of Burlington and Graham. Oh, what I was saying. Not, not one South sanctioned Church. by the state. <laughs> no, no, we can't put them up. No. <laughs> I don't know anybody that does that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Sheriff, you know anybody in Northern County got one already operated? No, sir. <laughs> <laughs> some coming out of some bars or something like that. Like, yep. What was the name of the sisters on the Waltons who uh, had oh, yeah. their special recipe? <laughs> Somebody yeah. here knows the name of those ladies. <laughs> The That's sheriff knows. Yeah. <laughs> What's the name? He knows them little ladies. <laughs> All right. Well, are there any other commissioner comments tonight? Well, it is 722, ladies and gentlemen. Tim missed out on it tonight. <laughs> Quick work. Record breaking time. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, so we'll be adjourned then. Thank you. Thank you for watching the Alamance County Commissioners meeting. Meetings of the Alamance County Board of Commissioners occur on the first and third Monday of every month in the Commissioners Chambers at the County Office Building at 124 West Elm Street in Graham. Typically the first meeting of the month occurs at 9 a.m. and the second meeting occurs at 7 p.m. Changes to the meeting schedule will be posted on the county website at www.alamance-nc.com. The video of this meeting is broadcast on local Gov TV. Please go to www.localgovtvnc.com for more information about this schedule and to see more videos produced by your local governments. You can also access this meeting through our website at www.alamance-nc.com or at our YouTube channel. Technical questions regarding this meeting's broadcast or production may be sent to our county webmaster at webmaster at alamance-nc.com. This address is for technical questions only. Comments and questions about the content of the meeting may be made to the commissioners themselves. You can find their contact information at the Alamance County website at www.alamance-nc.com. There, you can click on the link that says County Commissioners to learn more about our commissioners, read minutes and agendas of commissioner meetings, and find other information about the County Commissioners. You can also send mail correspondence to County Commissioners, 124 West Elm Street, Graham, North Carolina, 27253. Again, thank you for tuning in to the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments.